Minted is a pigment first beauty brand celebrating women of all hues and prioritizing women of color. Bing! <laughs> <laughs> Estee Lauder started her business with just four skincare products. Bobbi Brown launched her eponymous line with a range of neutral lipsticks that looked and felt natural. Every beauty brand has to start somewhere. But how are the challenges different for a brand in 2019? Let's explore. So I'm in East Harlem right now, about to meet with the co-founders of Mented Cosmetics. They're gonna tell us about how they grew their business from an idea in their apartment to the successful business that it is today. Hi guys! Hi. Good to see you! It's so good to see you! Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so let's set the stage for how Mented started. What year was it? What were you guys, how did you guys meet? I want to know that moment, that meet cute moment. <laughs> it's funny because we basically had a meet cute moment. While at Harvard Business School, we we're both in the student run variety show called the HBS show. And KJ was in the show, she was a performer, and I was running all the costumes behind the scenes. And so we met backstage during rehearsals and just hit it off. And then how did that friendship turn to let's start a business together? <laughs> we knew if we could figure out an idea to work on together, we would. And during one of those conversations, Amanda mentioned to me she'd been looking for the perfect nude lipstick mm. for three years. So I'm trying on a cream nude. Like always, it looks very ashy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for both of us, that was the moment when we realized there's a real opportunity here yeah. for makeup that works for our skin tones, that celebrates us, and that doesn't make us feel like afterthoughts right. in the world of beauty. And what about the name? Can you explain it and how, who came up with it? Throughout the process, we kept saying to each other, we want to make lipsticks that are fully pigmented. Mm. And we had said that so many times, and I think one day I just said to Amanda, we keep saying pigmented. What if we call it minted? And when, when did you decide that this could be a full-time thing? We knew the first thing that we had to get right was the product. And so we started with, okay, how do we solve this new lipstick problem? We watched a bunch of how do, how do you make lipstick videos on YouTube. We went on Google, we bought all of the pieces, the mold, the, the wax, the dyes. Um, and then in our kitchens on weekends, uh, we, we cooked it up. And eventually the first two shades we made, which are still our top sellers, uh, was Minted Number no. 5, which is KJ's Perfect Nude, and Dope Taupe, which is mine. And we remember that moment of like jumping around the apartment and being yeah. like, oh my God, you look great, I look great. And then being like, oh wait, do we write it all down? Do we write all the steps down? <laughs> and how long did you guys formulate for? So actually not that long. What's interesting is that creating amazing products for deeper skin tones isn't rocket science. Mm. You just have to want to do it. Because we came up with Minted Number no. 5 and Dope Taupe on our first day, on our first try. Wow. We'd never made lipstick before. And we came up with those shades. So we're talking about the product formulation aspect of starting a business, but what about the other side? How did you guys then take this idea and this formulation and get the finances in order to start the business? The good news is when we went out to start raising, we had our business school network. We reached out to, I remember emailing every single woman who called herself an angel investor who was a part of the HBS network. But even if you don't have that, that was like a fraction of the emails I sent. I also went on LinkedIn and just looked for people who listed themselves as angel investors, who invested in beauty in the past. And then I would look for people who I was connected to who could introduce me to those people. So it's a lot of, in the beginning, cold emailing. I, I think like if for every 100 emails I sent out and I'd sent out at least three times that, we probably had like 10 people either say yes or come close to saying yes. I, I think for us it was a numbers game. I think for women, hopefully as more women like us, like help other women with their raises, it becomes less of a numbers game and more about just connecting people to the right investors and to the right networks. That's certainly the hope and why we spend a lot of time mentoring other entrepreneurs um, so that it doesn't just feel like you know, I'm just th showing, throwing darts at a board trying, trying to make it work. So now we're in your offices, specifically your office, right, KJ? How long have you been in this space? 
We've been in this space since May 2018 and most likely gonna leave around that same time, May 2020. Wow. So we're excited for what our next space is going to be, but it's all good things because that means the team is growing, we need more space, we need more conference rooms. Is that crazy to think about from where you guys started? Yes, yes. like I, we still very much remember the days when it was just KJ and I sitting across from each other at my kitchen table. But it's really cool now to think about how big Mitch it's gotten and, and how it's our vision, but being executed by all of these great people with all of their great ideas. What do you feel like has been the hardest lesson you've had to learn since starting a business? I'm gonna go with patience. Startup world, it's just this emotional roller coaster and you can feel the highs, but you definitely feel the lows. You can start to compare yourself to other people and how they're performing, how big is their team, how big is their revenue now. Like All you can do is just be patient with yourself in the process. So since your capsule collection of lipsticks, you guys have definitely expanded the range. How did you decide to, what was next, and how did you decide what product would come? Um, so after we launched lipstick, we launched gloss. Mm -hmm. And that was an easy decision because we knew there were so many women who wanted to participate in the nude lip movement, yeah. but just were not lipstick women. And then our next thing was eyeshadow. So our eyeshadow palette, uh, which has sold out several times, is sold out yeah. now on our wow. site. Um, has really taken off. And then 2019 has just been such a year because oh, yeah. we're now in face. Yeah. We launched our Skin by Minted wow. foundation stick in March, which has been phenomenal. It's had such a great reception. It's won awards, we're really excited about it. But we really feel like we have a solid collection that we're proud of, that we stand behind, that really solves solutions for our girl. Yeah. Um, and now you can do a whole minted face. I love it. So what is next? Can you kind of tease that out for us? <laughs> like, Yeah, well, we so we try to keep a tight lid on what's coming next because yeah. we like surprising our customer. Um, but I will say, you know, this was the year we entered into complexion. We still have more complexion products we're excited to launch this year and beyond. Um, we also just did our first celebrity collaboration with Ashley Blaine Featherson of Dear White People. Yes. That has gone really well for us. So I think there are more collaborations in our future. Mm -hmm. as well. I'm excited. So how do you guys measure success? When do you guys take a step back from everything that's happening and say this is good, this is not, this is what we need to work on? I measure success in the number of people who are engaged with this brand and feel like we are doing something for them that other brands aren't. We were on a really great segment the other day, a really great TV segment, and I was watching some of the uh, uh, emails come into our customer service email line, and literally so many of them people ended it with, thank you for making this company. Oh. That's and nice. that is just like, yeah. you know, that to me is success and that's what I try to remember. We have real lives and real people who we're touching. What's some advice that you have for people who are wanting to start their own businesses? I would say go for it. As someone who was anxious, didn't really know about this, this process, this life, didn't think it was possible, I'm glad there was a moment where I saw the people around me doing it and it normalized the risk and it made me think, okay, I can try this too. Because win, lose, or draw, it has been worth it. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I feel like this story is really gonna resonate with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. thanks yeah. for doing this. Was yeah, awesome. thank, thank you. you. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling so inspired. Whether you want to start your own brand or maybe you just want to make a career switch, I hope that you at least try. Because as corny as it sounds, when you look back on your life, you'll never regret the chances that you took, but you just might regret the ones that you didn't. The world is your oyster, my friends.